to the truly sensitive. If it feels like we have reached an impasse, it's because we have. Its synonym is not checkmate for no reason either. If it feels like everyone is desperately reaching out into the dark, trying to find answers, and things aren't really getting anywhere, well, that's not for no reason either. It's because they're not. How many are now extremely focused again on politics and the circus theater of this place? Is watching a bunch of clowns going to reveal anything? What are you being vigilant about? Always looking out there, but never looking within. It has been easy to get caught up in the mix of doing that again, hasn't it? Do you really believe that the news is going to tell you what's really going on? The news where you are always getting caught in its headlines? Do you really believe that any of those political clowns care about you in the slightest? They could care less. Every one of us is cannon fodder to them, at best. It has been said before, but that which is tremendously important bears repeating. When one gets caught in the noise and chaos of this place, it can be easy to lose sight of that which is significant. It can be easy to lose focus on the only target that matters. It needs to be asked, though, who is to define what is legitimately significant? Who are the so-called experts in this area? That which is called significant, it is observed, is something which is already pre-drawn out for everyone by the ministers of truth in this tightly controlled realm. Have a family, chase a career, build up your bank account, prepare for retirement, then die and go to heaven. That's the general outline, is it not? It's all already figured out for you before you even arrived. Pretty simple, right? Simply do the things, be inspired by the pathways already trodden, shut your mouth, listen to the authorities of this place, don't ask the big questions, and just live your best life. For almost everyone, that seems to be enough. It seems to be satisfactory, and there is no need to look into anything. What's the point? To look deeper into things is a waste of time and far too serious. You're going to become depressed, and you're going to miss out on everything in life. If you decide to go against the generalized pattern, then you are judged as being a quack, a loser, a nihilist, an idiot, and every other terrible name that these so-called authorities have in their grand book of insults. How dare you go against the trend? How dare you attempt to feel out that there is something severely wrong with this entire place and with its entire setup? It wants to throw you into the nuthouse for daring to question its authority. And sometimes it does. But, of course, the nuthouse is where we already are. It's why the brain, which is the falsely crowned ruler, is shaped like a nut. It hates when anyone cracks that nut and figures it out. Who wants to come to the realization that they are in one gigantic loony bin, especially when all perceive themselves to be sane? The next insult that is hurled is towards the speaker for pointing this out. The ruler then uses its minions to hurl insults this way and say that the only one who's insane is the one behind this voice. Do not listen to the ramblings of that madman. It screams in its anger to just keep following its way of doing things. Continue to follow its path, which leads where exactly? The fact of the matter is that we all know very well where the path leads. To death. To the graveyard. In this way, we can all become fortune tellers for ourselves and everyone else. I can predict your future. You will end up in the grave. The positive side of its mind that is inside of everyone really dislikes hearing this. It again calls the speaker a nihilist for pointing out this obvious fact. We aren't supposed to talk about that and look at it with the utmost seriousness. It is something to be denied. Something that we turn a blind eye to. We know that it happens, but let's not talk about it, okay? The New Age philosophy states that we are simply here to 
have a temporary experience. God is just experiencing itself through us, and then we go back to source. We do this over and over again so that God can get to know itself. This belief is no different than any other religious belief, in the sense that your salvation is already secured. Do not look further into anything. Just live your best life so that source can understand itself better. It's another deferral, another political strategy. The mind pushes those who get a little further in their questioning to say, yes, yes, that's the right way to see it. Don't look any further than that, though. It doesn't want you to look any further because you might figure it out. You might defeat the mind at its own game. Then there are those who keep shouting that all that is being presented here are the problems and no solutions. The fact of the matter is that every solution under the sun has been presented, but these aren't the ones that the mind wants to hear. Those who believe in the mind and its dualities do not want to hear about getting out of the mind. Out of the mind completely and into the heart. Those who believe in the mind do not want to hear about getting rid of their belief in the absurdities of divided systems and ideologies such as politics, money, war, patriotism, racism, and class structure. The mind loves hierarchies and doesn't want to lose the advantages gained through these systems, so it asks the speaker to present other alternate solutions, which are all ridiculous. It wants to hear talk about methods to bring about a more sound monetary system. It wants to hear talk about the right politician that should be elected to lead us all to some kind of promised land. It wants to hear dictums from a patriot who upholds the belief in statutory liberties granted by other authorities through the Bill of Rights or other such documents. It doesn't want to hear about what needs to be done to attain total freedom, though. It doesn't want to hear that the whole foundation of this entire place is built upon a wrong premise, a dichotomy, a paradox. It doesn't want to hear that it can't have things both ways. It cannot have its cake and eat it too. It cannot have its earth heart and eat it too. It wants to instead hear ridiculous solutions such as writing a perfectly worded letter to the Vatican or to the government in which this perfectly worded letter will grant you complete sovereignty within this construct to do as you please. The system will then be so terrified of your words that you receive verbatim from another outside authority and leave you and your loved ones alone for the rest of your life. Does that sound right? Does that sound like a solution? The whole premise is not being looked at correctly. The real problem is not separate from any single one of us, and the fact that this cannot be seen is the very foundation of the problem. The mind wants to see the literal as metaphorical and vice versa. It takes extreme courage to see things for what they are. When one realizes they are in hell, they are doing everything in their power to leave this place and to never come back. Too many at this juncture in the zodiac timeline cannot perceive this or are unwilling to because the last play of this system is to grant as much privilege and pleasure as possible within its circus construct to have everyone continue to be attached to it, desiring to remain tethered to its incarnated carnival incarceration. The belief in this system and its extremely temporary pleasures ensures its own continuity, since this belief creates a type of contract. That's why the belief that this is just an experience for the source of all things to have through you keeps you tethered to this realm automatically. You are consenting to come back here over and over again through that belief. You are consenting to being consumed by it 
so that it, the mind, can continue to use you as a resource to be mined from. Just a reminder that we are all just re mind or until we are not. It must be repeated. Look in the mirror. Do you really believe that what you see in there is who you truly are? That you are just mere or? You are not. You are an incomprehensible infinity, a magical being. In the inability to see this, one's vision has not been corrected. One sees themselves as just a human being, a meat suit that is aging and will eventually die. In death, all the knowledge that has been fought for will be erased, deleted upon consumption. How many now hold the belief that their repeated amnesia is a desirable situation? The paradoxical belief is that one perceives themselves to be both. Cleverness will dictate that one is both a soul or spirit inside of this human suit, but that they are also the suit. Again, one cannot have things both ways. Belief is more important than can be fathomed. Before stating this next part, let it be declared that the last thing that is being done here is the spreading of fear. I sincerely wish that everything was all sunshine and rainbows. That all we had to do was smile, laugh, and radiate joy, and soon we would all be vibrated up into some ethereal dimension of happiness and freedom. Wouldn't that be nice? It should be quite clear that this is not the case. Anyone listening that wants to believe that, please feel free to do so, since no one is holding you back from anything. If one believes that, the entirety of these works has not been comprehended, and it is highly suggested that one move on. For anyone paying any kind of attention to the whole structure of this reality, this is definitely not going to be the case. The fact of the matter is that we are at the end of the hour, so to speak. This entire system is a construct of time, and that it thus eventually runs out of it. The snake, which is the mind, must once again consume itself and complete the paradox. It must harvest itself. The circle must always complete itself. The mental premise is that it wants to consume everything, and since it wants to consume everything, it must therefore become nothing. Everything becomes nothing. One equals zero. This happens over and over again. Just as we all live and die, live and die, the entire system lives and dies, lives and dies. During these last moments, this system is going to, in the near future, demand that everyone pledge a form of allegiance to it. Everyone under the sun has heard this referred to as the mark of the beast, and the declaration of it has been spouted off a million times, becoming its own proverbial boy who cried wolf. That's also been the point. No one believes the boy when the real wolf shows up. It has been no joke to say that we are food energy for a vampiric system that cares nothing for any of us. The analogy of what is to come is quite easy to discern. Just as a cattle rancher vaccinates and then brands their herd, so too does this system do the same thing. The first step at this point in the paradoxical timeline were the shots, and the second step will be the brand, which is a synonym for Mark. The quarantine became the symbolic indicator of the human cattle being corralled. The taking of the brand is the official crowning of your mind, declaring that you want to be protected by this system and its false ruler, which is the mind. That's the broad way that already has been and will again be followed by the many. The symbolic indicators have been the most obvious thing in the world. The coronavirus is the false crown, and the one who takes the brand mark will follow the vision of the mind and inevitably move into its slaughterhouse. That will occur, or one will walk the path of the heart, which will be an actual walk through the desert, since at that point, there will be zero access 
to any of the constructs of this system. It will be completely black and white for everyone. Take the brand or reject it and have absolutely no access points to anything of this system. No job, no stores, no gas, nothing. The closing off of many system points for those who rejected the mental authorities in the last few years was but a trailer for coming attractions. It is called the narrow gate for a reason. And would one want a chance at a chance and the opportunity of an eternity in the short time to come, they will not cling to anything that this system has to provide. It unfortunately means an actual walk through the desert. The crown of this system is to have one be seated again on its throne, which is a toilet where one is thrown around over and over again through its life-death construct. Its throne is where we flesh it all away over and over again. The heart would never do such a thing and is always doing everything in the power of eternity to correct the vision and bring the heart back to its place in the truth. To be in the totality of truth is to crown the heart, to bring it back home. It cannot just do this through one's sheer belief in an external savior. It cannot do this when one is holding in their heart onto so many absurd and false beliefs created by a divided structure. That which is carried in your heart is carried with you. You must correct the vision in yourself. The belief in divisions cannot be brought into the eternal kingdom. You cannot just defer your salvation and think that it will all be wiped away and corrected for you. Do you believe your value to be so little that you perceive that your legitimate creator is going to manipulate you like a puppet in that way too? It is necessary to repeat. Only the one who is willing to give up everything can then gain everything. Also, at this point, feel free to be angry at the speaker. Mock him and wish upon him the worst. That's absolutely fine. Throw the worst of your insults and hatred in this direction. Take it all out, because one is right to feel angry. The fact of the matter is that this place takes everything away from us over and over again. What difference is there really between a large harvest and the smaller one called individual death? The little is the big, and when the analogy is followed all the way through, it can easily be seen that what happens to the individual eventually happens to the collective. All of the minutes add up to the hour and the beginning of the hour is simultaneously the end of it. I have held off from being forthright with this message for a while, because the fact of the matter is that it is terrible. It's a terrible message. Who wants to be the bearer of bad news? There is still much to reveal that I am now being compelled to say. It has become the sacred duty of this heart to reveal the mystery at this time no matter how much hatred and disdain it brings about. This heart will also certainly be mocked as pretending to know what the future holds. To what advantage? What is being sold here? Those who call all of these works some kind of sick practical joke do not look at the sickness of this entire reality and all of the pain that it causes. It is this world and its false ruler that is the sick practical joke. Look at its wars, disease, hatred, poverty, famine, destruction, and twisted perversions. This place is the joke.
how anyone can believe in any of it is beyond comprehension. If anything, I owe an apology for being late with the message. The beginning of this delivery has weighed heavy on this heart, but it would weigh much heavier to not allow the revelation time to sink in before all these things come to pass. As much time as is possible. The other fact of the matter is that everyone has a choice in everything. Everyone can hear these things and say to themselves that they are the ravings of a mad person. Someone who thinks they know something but in fact knows nothing. The squashed insights of a blasphemous peddler in false truths. Or the egotistical ramblings of a pseudo-intellectual. All of that is also fine. There is no insult that can be hurled at any individual which will prevent the outcomes which are going to be brought about by forces beyond anyone's comprehension. All of these works were put forward to help present an opportunity of an eternity, and this either hits one directly in the heart where it matters, or it will not. Any who think that the speaker has been interested in subscribers, fame, or adoration have not been paying attention at all. Go ahead and hit that dislike button. Go ahead and unsubscribe. All of these ideas of being followed and liked are all part of the same problem. They are absurdities, and there is no place for them in the infinite kingdom. The heart is not a beggar looking for approval from outside authorities. The price of being inside of this construct really is very high. But it is not an impossible price to pay. Everyone is being given the same chance to pay the price necessary for total freedom, but it is fear itself that will block many from doing this. This is why it was said that I wish we could all be free. I really do, because this is a prison. We are being held prisoner. The minds of those who live lavish, westernized lifestyles have extreme difficulty in perceiving this, though. That's why the last card the mind plays must be to make this system seem as luxurious and desirable as possible. Make it easy, pleasurable, and filled with decadence. The only way it can do this, though, is to destroy more of the earth than ever before, while calling it success and progress. Yet simultaneously talking all day long about green initiatives and working towards saving the planet by utilizing less. A contradiction if there ever was one. The whole world is looking to build their little empire. And this heart is collapsing his entirely. This heart is embarrassed. This heart is completely done with sitting on the incorrect throne and being tossed around like a piece of trash. This heart has found the way home and sees the truth and is ready to be mocked by the entire human race. This heart is become the truth.